Hello, welcome back to the Networker video series. In today's video, we will be looking at the Networker backup flow. So here we will be talking about the high-level inter-process communication and data flow of a typical Networker scheduled backup to a set backend device. So this particular video has been put here right after the introduction to processes to help you understand how these processes talk to each other during a scheduled backup. So for this video, let's assume that we have a data zone wherein we have one backup uh, server and the same backup server is also acting as a storage node. We have uh, a, a volume, for example, a data domain volume or an AFTD volume configured for taking in the backups. Also, during a scheduled backup, there are certain operations that uh, are completed before starting an actual data backup of a said client. Again, for this video, we will be omitting all those operations and concentrating only on the data backup operation of the schedule backup. So in this slide, what you see is the initial communication when, a, when the schedule backup is kicked in. So the NSRD daemon checks if the schedule of a certain workflow is reached or met and whenever a schedule is met, it is going to start the workflow for that particular backup. This is done by NSRD communicating with the NSR job D and providing it information as to which clients are part of this particular backup job. For example, we will for this explanation, we'll just assume that this particular workflow has just one client. So the NSRD asks the NSR job D to communicate with the NSR exec D of the respective client and ask it to initiate, uh, initiate the save command. So save command is the binary that is responsible for generating file system backup data from a client. So once the save is initiated, the save in turn is going to communicate back to the NSR job D, which in turn is going to communicate this information to request to the NSR D asking for it to support the backup that it is going to initiate. So this is all indicated by the arrow with the numerical two on it. Once the NSRD receives the request from the save command for backup support, it is going to arrange for a device to support the backup of this said client. For this, it communicates to the NSR SNMD of the respective storage node to arrange for a device. The NSR SNMD in turn selects an NSR MMD. So NSR MMD is basically selecting a certain device because every NSR MMD is used to uh, manage one respective device. And this NSR MMD when asked to be available for backup starts the mounting of the volume in case the volume is not yet mounted. And this information is sent back to the NSRD uh, asking the NSRD or the, telling the NSRD that the target volume is ready to take the backups or the entire flow here or the entire process uh, in the third step is indicated by the arrows with the numerical three. So once NSRD uh, gets the information that the device is ready for backup and NSRD in turn communicates back to the save command through the NSR exec D and the, uh, the job D and the NSR exec D to, to indicate to the client so that it starts pushing the data to the storage node. In the next step, as you see here in the arrows indicated by the uh, numerical 5, save is sending the data or uh, sending the uh, backup data to the NSR MMD. While doing this, it is also sending, uh, generating the client file index data. Client file index data is nothing but the catalog or the information regarding what files are being backed up by this particular uh, operation. And that information is sent to NSR index D which in turn stores this information into its 
CFI or the client file index database. When the NSR MMD receives the information or the backup data from the save, it sends this information to the respective target volume. It also sends the metadata information to the NSR MMDBD. So the NSR MMDBD is responsible for managing the media database, which means that this process is storing the information regarding the backup and the respective target volume in the media database. And this is required for further tracking of the backups. So this was essentially an overview of how the backup uh, flow takes place during a scheduled backup. Thank you for staying till the end. We will meet again in the next video.